Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This is the Inwin 103. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we are going to be taking a look at the Inwin 103. Now this is a successor or improvement upon the original 101 and the 101C which you may have seen somewhere before. Essentially, it is exactly the same design. Pretty much everything is absolutely identical, apart from they've added a little bit of flair to it. So, on the front, we've got these pinstripes, which run in different directions. We've also got the InWin logo at the bottom. We've got InWin stripes here. And this section is the best bit. This is our new InWin addressable RGB LED. Now before you get worried, addressable RGB, I haven't got an addressable RGB motherboard, all is not lost. Inside the box is actually a standalone addressable RGB controller, which you simply power from a SATA cable, which is brilliant news, let's be fair. There isn't a Molex in here, it's brilliant. Power up the SATA connector, which then You've got a press button, so you can cycle through the different color modes, which hopefully you'll be seeing flash through. The box itself has a three pin connector, the standard type, as you see on most motherboards, which you plug the header into, and it's also got a pass through connector, so you can connect it to other devices, maybe your motherboard, maybe additional addressable RGB strips, fans, all that kind of stuff. As with most things, the only limit is your imagination. So let's have a quick tour through the case and see what it's all about. Now, on the top, we've got a power button, dual USB 3.0, headphone and microphone slots, standard affair. We've also got the additional highlights to mirror what we've got on the front. So you've got that nice angular design and also the statement from Inwin. And almost stamped on the top says 103 case, designed by Inwin. Now, hopefully it's not too reflective. I'll get rid of the glass straight away anyway, just so it isn't too bad. But we've got the usual deal, same as the 101 and the 101C. You've got these absolutely brilliant little uh, plungers to remove the glass, which just pop out. The bottom is held in place by two lugs at the bottom. So you can just move out slightly and remove the glass. Now the glass is actually got the stripes on it as well very much like the rest of the case, the front and the top. And also in the bottom, you've got the little logo there saying since 1985, showing some way towards Inwin's history within the PC and gaming community. Also the glass is actually quite a dark smoke tint, which hopefully is uh, coming through on the camera okay. So slightly darker, I've, I'm not sure, I think it is slightly darker than the 101C. Maybe I'll get them side by side a little bit later on to give you a comparison. So. Inside the case, we've got pretty much the usual deal as we did with the 101. So you've got fantastic layout for motherboards, so ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and even extended ATX isn't gonna be a problem in here. I'll put the full specifications in the description below so you can check out the exact sizes to see if your motherboards will fit. At the rear, 120 mil fan placement, or alternatively, an all-in-one radiator. Along the bottom, 360 millimeter radiator supported or three 120 mil fans. As was the case with the 101 and the 101C, once you've got fans in this bottom, it does leave a little bit of room in between the fans and the motherboard to route some of your cables in the back channel. So we've got seven PCI Express expansion slots on the back. Also there's some additional wiring area at the bottom of those slots. Plenty of wiring grommet holes, no rubber grommets unfortunately, but nicely rounded off edges, so you're not gonna cut yourself or do any damage while you're actually trying to put the thing together. No ventilation on the front panel, that is all taken care of by this back section where you've got room for 220 mil fans or again a 240 mil radiator. The fans will blow straight out from the back, so you've got cool air coming in from the bottom, rising with convection and being pulled out the back and also being pulled out of the rear section. Also, you've got the attic area for your power supply. So again, you'll have another fan in there drawing this hot air out. I have found actually with the 101 and the 101C, 
Airflow is fantastic, temperature is fantastic. It is a fantastic design in my opinion. I don't think there's much they could do to improve that one, but then they bring out this one with all the nice features. The actual, the black finish on it, the satin matte black finish is beautiful. The camera really doesn't do it justice. Looking at it in person, the, the very fine speckle to the paint and the attention to detail where, as far as I can tell, every single surface is covered with a, a really thick layer of paint. I've actually knocked this a couple of times already and it's not chipped or scratched or anything. So um, if you are slightly more abusive to your cases, then I can't see this being a problem. It is a sturdy, well-built case. There's virtually no flex to it, being the fact it's one piece of solid metal, almost one piece, which is kind of wrapped around. It's actually bent over at the front, so there's no edges. It's all folded over from, I think it's probably one sheet of metal and just all folded in. So the rigidity on it is, it, well, it's a solid case. Let's not get too carried away. It's a nice, solid case. Okay, calm down, getting a bit excited. So at the bottom, I forgot to mention where you've got the, the fan section, you've also got a full length grill and filter, which is removable, washable. Um, I've taken mine out quite a few times. And actually the design of it is really good because the fact that the air is coming in from, effectively from this section here and the same on the rear, any dust which is traveling has to travel in and then the air travels 90 degrees upward, which does reduce some of the airflow but in turn also prevents the dust because as dust is being pulled across, gravity obviously tries to take control so it's more likely to settle and the mesh does a fantastic job of picking up a lot of dust and dirt. Even up there where it's mounted quite high, there's still dust in particles and cat hair and all that kind of stuff in the air and it does collect it all really well. I haven't had to clean the inside of that case yet and it's been up on that shelf, I don't know, for maybe maybe six months or so, I'm not entirely sure, but it's been there a long time and it's kept really clean. The glass stays really clean as well. Again, that's possibly because the way the dust travels, so it settles more at the bottom rather than going actually inside the case, which is more evident when you've got front mounted fans because it just pulls the dust straight through and then normally sort of ends up on the side of the glass or on the side of the cooling area. Okay, so we talked about fans, cooling, etc. Uh, the attic area, like I said, power supply, plenty of room up there. You can put pretty much any power supply you want in there. Plenty of room for cable management as well. So if you've got additional cables, if you aren't lucky enough to have a modular power supply, then there's plenty of room for storing cables and all those kinds of things. Also, probably a good idea to store maybe the adapter for the addressable RGB. So moving to the front, we've got the uh, traditional caddies for your larger drives, three and a half inch drives. You can put SSDs in them. In my one behind me, I've only got one uh, two and a half inch drive SSD which uh, is fantastic and is really nice and quiet. These uh, cages are quite a nice strong plastic. They're not flimsy in any way, shape or form. And I thought actually the hinge might be a problem because of it being plastic and against a, a metal edge, but I've taken them in and out quite a few times and there's been no damage as of yet. So I think that is pretty much it in that area. Not really a lot else I can, uh, I can go over. Again, you've got cutouts for wiring grommets. You've also got a section here which with the supplied PCI Express bracket. So if you've got a particularly long graphics card or one which is uh, tempted to sag a little bit, you've got a PCI Express graphics card support bracket, which can go in here, various different options. So you should be able to support most cards in some way, shape or form. So let's move around to the back of the chassis. So as you can see on the back, you've got the power supply area in the attic area, uh, nice and easy to get to, no real problems there when the side panel's off. IO shield area, hexagonal mesh, which I'm a big fan of, and there's your PCI Express expansion slot areas. Again, very well made. The finish on this paint, I still can't get over it. It's such an even paint job. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen a nicer paint job on a case in a long, long time, if, if at all, to be honest. So moving round to the backside, he said. So hopefully, on the camera, you can pick up the uh, the mesh effect grill here. This is where the 240 mil fans or a radiator will exhaust all the heat. Now, when I first looked at this, I was a little bit unsure about how well it would work because of the layout of the hexagonals and the punch outs and all that kind of thing. But actually it's worked absolutely fine. In some ways, I th it, it looks like it's closed off. It must be to do with the direction of the air travel or the way they've designed it. 
but you do actually get a, a really good airflow from it. So let's take the side panel off. Now the side panel again, as per the previous version, which I keep on harping back to, um, you've got the captive screws, which is always a nice thing. And these are particularly well machined and they screw in and out very nicely. No problems with burrs or anything like that. And there, hopefully you can get a better angle of the, uh, the ventilation punch outs. Okay, so this is the, uh, the business area where we do all our cable management and all the kind of boring mundane stuff that we have to do when we're building a PC. But this is actually a joy to work on. Again, well, I've had a little bit of experience with that one, but um, this case does make it pretty easy for you. So this section here, you've got the, uh, the rear area for your hard drives, so access to cabling for those SATA connectors and power connectors, no problem at all. The cabling has actually improved. They've rooted it away over the top of this area now rather than before it was kind of along here where there was a weird cutout and it was qu quite difficult to get the cables to go through and the, the back panel on easily so this is this is a bit of an improvement not a difficult improvement because the cutout was there already there's only a matter of putting a cable tie around and it seems to have paid off so massive basement area loads of uh, cutouts at the top to run your cables through big area there for the fan to uh, pull the air from inside and out straight through this plastic tray is where you um, mount the fans on the other side, so again, good access there. The only downside about this bit is, obviously, you can't really run cables down past it. You could do, but it'll block some of the airflow, or could get jammed in the uh, the fans themselves. But you can run cables down this channel, and it brought it along there. And obviously, you can run it along through here, and along through the top. But plenty of cable option, cabling options on this cable bundle here we get the usual suspects so you've got your hd audio your usb type 3 and you get a power switch no reset button on this one and no activity leds just that one which actually this is an unusual i don't think i've seen a case in a long time that didn't have a hard drive activity led hmm that's different Right, so let's get rid of those cables. We don't really need those here. So moving around, again, you've got plenty of punch outs for routing your cables through. You've got loads and loads of tie down points. There's like five in that area there alone. You've got two mountain areas here for two and a half inch drives on these removable caddies. We were just held in with thumb screws. So you can take those out, attach a drive. So if you've got uh, more drives than can fit in the bays, no problem. It's also four, up to four drives in here. A four two and a half inch or two two and a half inch and two three and a half inch again more cutouts down this bottom section here i think this cutout here is actually a new addition i don't remember seeing that before and that would be in the area where your uh, hd audio plug would go generally and possibly your rgb connections which is possibly why it's been added yeah i'm looking over on the other case now i can't see it so i don't think it is on the other one so maybe that is a new addition which is a, a nice thing to see actually make cabling a little bit easier it looks like the motherboard tray has been slightly recessed more. Whether it's just an illusion or not, I'm not entirely sure. They've also put some additional cutouts here as well, from what I can tell, in this section where the fans go. Again, so you can put your cables through there, rather than having to route them all the way through, which is a, a, a nice touch. If it isn't on the other ones already, I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Right, so let's go through and see what we get in our accessory bag. He says, dropping it. So you get a three pin RGB connector coupler. So you can use that to couple a few of these RGB connections together. You get an addressable RGB sticker, which should be on the top, but I suppose they've left it off to give you the option. This is the RGB controller. So it's an in-wing controller, just a simple push button, little clicky button. On the back is a double-sided pad. So you can set it up with your SATA connection and maybe just stick it to the back of the back wall of the uh, the unit, or maybe just leave it in the basement. I'm not too sure if you could actually route this somewhere which would actually make it easy to, uh, to activate when the computer's on. I don't think there is. Maybe at the bottom, what I would possibly suggest is at the back where you've got your, your last PCI Express slot, you could probably get that to fit pretty snugly in there. I think that kind of works. So you'd have to consider your wiring options to get power to it and that kind of thing. 
but it's a pretty flexible case. I'm sure you'll be able to find somewhere for it. Or alternatively, you can just use the built-in addressable RGB controller on your motherboard. So I think that pretty much uh, wraps up this unboxing and initial look at the Inwin 103. I can't wait to build it, I've got to be honest with you. I'm kind of waiting for another addressable RGB strip because although it's got the addressable RGB at the front, I would really like for it to have something going around this edge. So I'm, I'm looking very much for some longer RG, addressable RGB strips to add to the system and uh, we'll be doing a build as soon as we get all the bits together. So if you want to see how the build goes, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the chime icon, obviously, so you get notified when the videos are released. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we will see you in the very next video. Thanks so much for watching.